right. but earthquakes. Christ spoke about this many times. He said there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, diversified areas simultaneously. Matthew 24, 7, Mark 13, 8, and Luke 21, 11. The book of Revelation really brings it forth that this will be one of the great signs just before Christ comes. In fact, you'll find earthquakes mentioned in Revelation 6, 12, chapter 8, verse 5, chapter 11, verses 13 and 19, and then, of course, the greatest earthquake in history, Revelation 16, 18, there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the face of the so mighty and earthquake and so great. No, it's not talking about San Francisco or L.A., though they say it's coming there through the San Andreas Fault. It's talking about Israel. Mm -hmm. Do you know when Jesus died on the cross in Matthew 27, 54, there was a horrendous shaking of the earth. And when he rose from the death, another stupendous earthquake in Matthew 28, 2. But when he returns, his feet hit the Mount of Olives and it smashes down the center from east to west. That will be the greatest earthquake in history, but it announced that Jesus has arrived. And I'm going to tell you, folks, it's right at the door. It is right at the door. And what an encouragement that is to know that the Lord has his hand, I know it, on the doorknob. He's ready to open that door and come through the clouds. <laughs> Woo! Amen. In the rapture. <laughs> if ever we needed prayer, though, for those who are involved in all these things, we need it now. Don't forget to pray for all these people. Well, in the midst of uh, saying we need prayer, there's a Wisconsin-based atheist and agnostic group that has filed a challenge to the constitutionality of our 1988 federal law, giving us a national day of prayer. National Day of Prayer ruled unconstitutional. Now, this has not had the vote yet, but we need to pray that that will not happen. And here's the one who is the one responsible for bringing this up, to pray or not to pray, the atheist agnostic who has brought it up. Well, the Pagan disinvites evangelists to speak and now this is the son of Billy Graham and they said that we declined that invitation because he made a statement that was not acceptable and Jack will be to talking the about that yes in just a moment you know President Ronald Reagan oh my oh my I love that smile don't you and this is what he said if we ever forget that we're one nation under God then we will be a nation Gone. Amen. Under. Thank oh, you, Reagan. Well, here's our president. He went to see Dr. Billy Graham, and perhaps he wants to explain why his son was uh, not coming to speak. Well, you know, I will say that President Reagan had a very, very strong statement there. Was it true, Jack? Will we be under if we don't have God? I really love that man and Rexella. I'll never forget the day that Reagan wrote to me and said, recently I've said in the newspapers, I believe Armageddon was coming. I want to thank you, Dr. Jack Fanipe, because you are the one through your videos and books has brought all this great enlightenment to my mind. Oh, that oh, really warmed my heart. Lord, yeah. But listen to me. Can you imagine that we have a barber crab in Wisconsin who's going to try to run this thing out of existence so that we can't have a day of prayer anymore. And another woman who's the leader in what is called freedom from religion, and Amy Gaylor, says, I'm going to unify the atheists of America. We're going to write every mayor, every governor, every person that's in politics and try to get this prayer stuff stopped. If it happens, God help America. We're going down like Reagan said. Now, why is it that 1% of the population, and that's all the atheists are, have control over the other 99%? Millions who want the day of prayer because we depend on it. I'm going to call these atheists, all 1% of them, whoever they are, wherever they are, what God calls them, and I make no apology for this. Psalm 14, 1 and Psalm 53, 1, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. We don't need to pray because he isn't there. Where is your brain? 
The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There's no speech, no language, where their voice is not heard. God says, can't you believe through my creation? And the psalmist said in chapter 8, verses 3 and 4, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which you've ordained, which you've created, what is puny man that you're mindful of? Now hear me. The astronomers now tell us that there are three heavens, and that agrees with the Bible, 2 Corinthians 12, 2. The first runs 600 miles into space. The second runs 187 trillion billions of miles into space unfathomable. And then there's a third heaven where God rules. Let's talk about that second heaven for a minute. Do you know that they now tell us that there are galaxies like our own into the hundreds of thousands and they've increased it to a million and recently to a billion. A billion different galaxies. Each with 200 to 400 million stars. It's unlimited and our God created it all. And for these people who can think it just happened through a big bang, you don't have much of an education. You know, Jack, all I can say is that I agree with our President Reagan. We need God more than ever for our nation. So let's pray that we will be able to have that day of prayer. That 1988 decision was very important for this nation of ours. Let's pray that we can keep it. And now, friends, I just want to say last 10 days for this astounding video dictator of the New World Order, alive and waiting in the wings. Here is our preview. Take a look, please. Jesus said there shall be false Christs and false prophets. Historically, they have come and gone, with the exception of the two final day leaders awaiting the imminent moment of their inauguration. One will become the dictator of the New World Order, the other the apostate head of a world religion uniting all faiths. Plans for both movements are being laid now. Will their seven-year term limit produce a blessing or a tragedy for six billion, seven hundred million global citizens? Will their rule lead to global peace or World War III? Dr. and Mrs. Van Empey will astonish you in their one-hour, 45-minute study as they deal with the proposed and promoted identities of the global dictator and the religious Christian defector. For details as to who, why, and when this dynamic apocalyptic duo begin their international reign, order Dictator of the New World Order, alive and waiting in the wings. Woo, friends, probably the most shocking video that we have ever made, and you need to have it because things are happening in the world that we talk about. There's the 800 number, there's the address. Make the call, right, Jack? Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard about Obama's religion. I explain it and expose it. He does not believe that Christ is the only way to heaven, and he mocks the word of God. You need to get this to know. And one more thing, you saw him with Billy Graham. The Pentagon is the one who went to God Graham son and said you cannot speak because of your talk about the Muslims uh, after 9-11 and get this ladies and gentlemen now he's at Billy Graham's home to fool the world uh, I wasn't behind it he's the commander in chief of the Pentagon Woo! much much more there's the 800 number make the call let me just say, friends, ooh, there's so much I'd love to share with you today. Our time just flees from us. There seems to be a huge growth in anti-government groups because of the concern, the direction our country is growing. And let's take a look at that. Militia seen gaining strength. Woo! All right, here's something that really concerns us. Nuclear agreement hailed as step forward. Now there's a non-binding accord, and it calls for scrutiny and security. Disarmament. Danger, danger. Stopping missile defense. The U.S. and Russia can't both be right about the new arms pact. Now they're building more. And we're destroying more of our nuclear weapons. Again, the Czechs torn over U.S. nuclear treaty with Russia. They say, how can you do this, President Obama? White House focus on nuclear terrorism gets scrutiny. Once again, opposing view on nuclear threat muddled Obama posture. And electricity grid in the United States penetrated by spies. Woo, is that a big one? 